Welcome to my version of Frontier Village. What's left of it? Come on in. very closely, you can hear the train. So here I've built my own main street and uh, I've got a replica of the last national bank and then the Silver Dollar Saloon, which I uh, put a bunch of little things in there from Frontier Village. You know, you can't have a western town without a saloon. Um, one of the times when I had it open for Halloween, my son had come to me and he said, hey dad, there are four women in the saloon and they're all crying. And I thought, well, it's not that big. So I went over there and they were all facing inside. I went in and I stood there for a few minutes and sure enough, I could hear them kind of you know, weeping a little bit. So I said, hello, they all turned around and tears are running down their faces and we just love Frontier Village. So I started crying too. So I've got a few names in here. I got a sign up here about Cleo Hanna looking for saloon girls. I got another sign down here of uh, my friend Pat Hanna. I got a few things here. Uh, this. This uh, piano, this upright piano, is just sort of to replicate the one that they had. Debbie Weitzel used to play and entertain people for, uh, you know, for quite a while. And uh, so I've gone ahead and put that in there just to remember her and the Weitzel family. But uh, anyway, i got a lot of artifacts, you know, cups and different things like that that uh, people have gone ahead and said, hey, I want this to be part of it. And so they've gone ahead and give me these things. And I'm able to go ahead and put them in here and share it whenever somebody comes by. So now I'm sharing it with you. So this is a replica of the pillory that I made that they had at Frontier Village. A lot of people call it the stocks. I don't know how many tens of thousands of people had their picture taken with this thing, but uh, since I've built it, everybody wants to stick their head through there, put their hands in, and get their pictures taken with it, and I always encourage that. So I'm going to go over here to the, uh, the trading post and the general store. So these two, I went ahead and built with a bunch of pictures to make it look like the ones that were there. I haven't painted them yet. But I've got a bunch of things in there that people have given me, and one of them, there's a holster that one of the gunfighters, Neil Falstead, gave to me that he used to use when he was a gunfighter at Frontier Village. And it's interesting how stuff like that keeps finding me, but uh, I just really love it that I can go ahead and point that out for people to say, you know, this is actually something that was used there. And uh, uh, in fact, Neil comes by and visits it every once in a while. And there it is. Genuine gunfighter gun belt from Frontier Village. All right, so this is the opera house that they had at Frontier Village. Now it does say Happy Hollow on it. Happy Hollow had bought this at the auction when Frontier Village closed and they set it up there. They had it from 1980 until 2006 when they auctioned a bunch of things off. But this has another meaning to a whole group of people that grew up with this thing with it at Happy Hollow. So there's another whole generation of young people that remember a piece of Frontier Village without even realizing it was part of Frontier Village, even though it was there all those years at Happy Hollow. I got this from a fellow that uh, had it at a pumpkin patch and then he was going to go ahead and close down his pumpkin patch and ask me if I wanted it. So I went ahead and brought it home. Of course I wanted it. <laughs> so this is Crazy Horse that they had out toward the front of the park. Now <clears throat> I got this from Ed Hutton as well and the funny thing is is the number of people that will get on this thing and get their picture taken with it as well. In fact the people taking pictures of them say okay now it's my turn, it's my turn. I want to get on the horse. Can I get my picture taken with the horse? You know, it's uh, just funny to see you know all of these adults that are like in their 50s and 60s trying to get you know in line with little kids to get on the horse. So uh, Just one of the things that I have a tendency to bring to the picnic that we have you know the last Saturday in June every year. But uh, anyway it's something if you come to one of the picnics maybe you can go ahead and get your picture taken with them as well. So here we have a replica of the old schoolhouse. Now obviously it's a little bit smaller than the one that they had, but uh, I've gone ahead and put this you know, together and I've tried to replicate some of the things with these lanterns and whatnot in here. Uh, I've got a bunch of signs that uh, have kind of migrated here as well. I've got a picture of me and Joe Zook and the founder of Frontier Village. And uh, this is another place that people like to spend quite a bit of time. They'll come in here and just hang out. Last year we had a gal that she was actually trying to act like she was teaching a school lesson before she get handed out candy at Halloween. But uh, anyway, I know my kids love to spend a lot of time out here. They've 
done a lot of studying, even in college, so kind of a quiet place to come to and just, uh, you know, just get a really serene feeling. These are the antique autos that they had at Frontier Village. Uh, Happy Hollow had bought this ride and they had them stored for 27 years. And uh, I was able to purchase one of them, but they said they couldn't buy any more. Five years later, I was able to go ahead and buy these, these other cars that I have here. And uh, I just can't believe that I've actually ended up with them. It's like a boyhood dream come true that I got you know, something from Frontier Village, but it was my favorite ride in the whole world. And they weren't that far away from me when they sold them. And uh, now I've got them here, I've got them housed so that people can enjoy them. People come out at Halloween and uh, get their picture taken with them. You know, some people get really emotional coming by and getting to see these things. Uh, it's just uh, incredible to me. Sometimes I have to kind of pitch myself when I come out here and see them because it's like I, I actually got them after waiting five years, especially for this yellow car. Um, they put us on the front page of the Mercury News, which really surprised me. But uh, that was back in 2006, and uh, it's, it's just a, <laughs> wonderful for me. So the whole reason for doing this is it's about people, people that love Frontier Village, people that can go back and have the heartfelt feelings that I had when I was uh, going to Frontier Village. You know, it was a different time, you know, my dad was still alive, he loved it as well. It just, uh, it really tugs at my heartstrings that they closed it. And now that I've been able to replicate a bunch of it and then bring a bunch of it here, the biggest thing is I want to share it with people. And it's interesting, the people that come by and see this, like at Halloween and whatever else, it really tugs at their heartstrings. Or people that never even saw it, they're just blown away that there's something like this that exists in somebody's backyard, which is really kind of weird. But I had a guy just this last Halloween, he's lived next to me, oh, 10 houses away for like 20 years. He came by and he says, you know what, I wondered where all the kids were going, I only got three. And they're all coming down here, I wanted to see what it was. He said, I had no idea this was down here. And he said, I used to go to Frontier Village, I used to see you put the sign out there, but I never knew what it was. He says, I'm so glad I came. He says, I'm bringing my family next year. I've had some people come by, even grown men, stand out there that used to work at Frontier Village. And those guys, you know, they're standing there just going, oh my goodness, you got the music playing. I remember riding, running the Ferris wheel. I remember doing the canoes or whatever else. And a couple of them, honestly, I've looked up at them. You can see it. Tears are actually coming out of their eyes. That's when I know I've accomplished what it is I've set out to do, is to really tug at people's heartstrings the way it tugs at mine. You know, it was a different time. It was a different place. I don't know if you can ever replicate it, even if you tried to build it again today. But uh, anyway, I really feel inside that I've been able to help a lot of people, bring back good memories, and just, I don't know, it just really tugs at my heartstrings that it's, that it's here at my house. I've been able to raise my kids with it, and they're having the memories as well. Thanks for joining me.